punta muna tayo sa review. Re-reviewin po natin yung various kind of criticism. Yun pong the last time sa various kind of criticism, meron po tayong uh, criticism number one, which we call biblical criticism. Biblical criticism is when the evolutionary thought and criticism combined, it has become a biblical criticism. Alright? Sa biblical criticism, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, number, there are three approaches. One is the Word of God. It is called the Ethical Guidebook. And it is recording a principle of morals. It is also a book of doctrine. And then, there is the other one, the kind of criticism. One is good, and one is bad criticism. All right, criticism number two is what we call radical criticism. It assumes the Bible is a book of life. To, uh, and any other. The book of life like any other, meaning the Bible is just like any other book. It's just a regular book. And then the, the next one is what we call the textual or the lower criticism. Itong textual and lower criticism, <coughs> it does not deny the Supernatural. But ang example natin dito ay si Herman Ralmaros who denied the miracles and said that the New Testament writers were frauds or hawks or pseudo. Number two, under that New Testament criticism or kasi dalawa po yung synonymous na pangalan. <coughs> the other name for New Testament criticism Criticism is lower criticism. We have got hold lesson. He said that the scripture serves primitive man as a guide. So that man is considered primitive, considered tribal, and that the Bible is only a guide. Now that man was of age, his own reason according to got hold lesson. His own reason and his duty is sufficient enough. All right. And that he attempts to redate the New Testament books based on the supposed evolution of authors. All right. The next one. So we have already number one, biblical criticism. Number two, we have uh, lower or text. We call that lower or textual criticism, which is also called the New Testament criticism. And then we have the radical criticism, which is pointer number three. It assumes that the Bible is only like a book, like any other book. And then number four, there's what we call the higher criticism. Importante po ang higher, lower criticism kapag ka kayo ay nag-aaral ng hermeneutics. Because criticism is, is the view which is good or bad, or approved or disapproved. That's why it is called criticism. It is not uh, literally mean gossips or chismis. The number three is the radical Criticism that which already we discussed. Number four <clears throat> is the higher criticism that which was built on and started or founded or believed by Immanuel Kant. And that he thought that sensation and reason are the only paths to truth. He also believed that conscience and morals do prove the existence of God. Yeah, but the kind of God that they are referring is not the capital G-O-D, but it is the kind of God according to their understanding. 
that Christ was only human and the Bible is just a book and that man can create his own religion as he cultivates a divine spirit or divine spark within him. And that <clears throat> there are so many religious uh, oppositionists and these are the ideas of other cultic religions that there is a divine spark in every human being that he can create his own religion and he can cultivate his own religion he can cultivate even his divine spark <clears throat> all right under higher criticism we have kant emmanuel and then we also have slider marker that's two. Number three is Hegel. Number four is Rishi. Okay. Under Kant, uh, there are five items under Immanuel Kant in higher criticism. One is sensation and reason are only paths to truth. Two, conscience and morals, however, do prove the existence of God. Kung ang tao may moralidad, may konsyensya, nagpapatunay na merong Diyos. Pero hindi ayon sa Diyos, the Creator that we have known. It is a kind of God in their own understanding. Yeah. So that means to say, itong mga existentialists and philosophers, they built their own kind of religion and their own kind of God in their, in their mind. All right. Na pointer number three, that Christ was human. Pointer number four, that the Bible is just a book. Pag sinabi natin just a book, it's any, any book like any other. It's, you know, it's not, it's not unique. It's not holy. And number five, sa pointer ni natin kay Emmanuel Kant, man creates his own religion as he cultivates a divine spirit or a divine spark within him. Kaya ito yung mga tao na pinagsama nila ang evolution. Kaya may problema. Yan, dahil ilan yan sila? Si Khan, Slyer Marker, si Eagle, and si Rishi. Si Slyer Marker, he believes that under higher criticism, subjective meaning personal feelings, personal experience, view. It counts a lot. But let us be reminded, paano kang magkaroon ng batayan ng personal or subjective experience? Kasi ang ibig sabihin ng subjective, it's your personal experience, it means your testimony and your view. Paano ka magkaroon ng holiness sa view na yan when you know that uh, the the general humanity they are sinners before christ had forgiven them before christ have atoned them kaya nilagay ko ang general uh, term ng them because we believe that that was the purpose when christ came for general humanity but some people they can only appropriate uh, redemption and salvation because they believe what Jesus has done. But for those who did not believe that Jesus is and was a Messiah, then that appropriation of salvation and redemption could not be attributed towards themselves. Yep. Number two, Sly Ermaka rejected reason as the path to the truth. That means to say, if if can't believe the, the moral sensation and reason are the only path to the truth. Sly or Marker is the opposite. He doesn't believe that reason is the path to the truth. Kasi pag sinabi natin reason, pupunta tayo sa tinatawag natin the philosophy of rationalism. At under rationalism, you pupunta rin tayo doon sa kanyang linking ng existentialism. And under that, mapupunta tayo na ang, ang kung walang reason, yung ating pananampalataya, how can we quote, 
first Peter 3 15. You know that for for the word you have to be ready always to answer to those who are going to do, make inquiry about your faith and you answer them with the spirit of humility. Yep. All right. And that according to Sly Ermacher, this is still under higher criticism because these are the people who had built or founded their concept on higher criticism. According to him, feeling was everything. Now, how can you base everything by feelings when human feelings is imperfect and the mood changes? And uh, the depravity, meaning the, the wickedness or the immoral or rather the, the, the sinful nature of man, such as Martin Luther quoted that, uh, as well as with Calvinism. That under Calvinism, they said that man is so depraved that he cannot differentiate what is true and what is untrue what is a lie and what is the truth yeah so you we cannot base things in everything by feelings dahil maraming mga tao the bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and we know that the heart and the feelings they are one connected to each other man's feelings of dependence in a vast universe leads him to god Feelings. Alam nyo ba kung saan tayo mapupunta? Tinatawag natin ng uh, continuum. Yeah, continuum. Contingency. Yung tao, so contingent one to another that they need each other. But, our contingency is limited. Kailangan natin lumapit sa non-contingent being. And that is God. Because God is not dependent on anything. Man, human being, is dependent on many things. So our dependency is of God. Yun yung tinatawag the man's feelings of dependence or contingency in a vast universe. Universe means totality, the wholeness, leads man to God. That means to say, the seeking man from the inside, from the, the nature of instinct, leads him to the seeking of the true God or to the seeking for that which will uh, fill in the, the vacuum within human being. The vacuum is the emptiness within man. That if, if that is God vacuum, only God himself can feel, can, could and can fill in the vacuum and the emptiness inside human being. All right. Then we have Hegel. This Hegel, according to his uh, concept, number one, God manifested himself in the world as man and that he reconciled contradictions of thesis and the antithesis into synthesis. It's just like saying, reconciling the black, the white, and, and the, when the black and the white mix together, you have a color gray. Yeah? And that Hegel said, God uh, got rid of absolutes and totalitarianism. The absolutes. We know that here on earth, we do not have absolutes. There is only one absolute being, and that is God. And if this is under higher criticism, then we can only seek for the absolute one. And that is, God is the answer to the absolutes. Replacing them with power of the state. Under Hegel, the power of the state is the omnipotent one. That means to say, the power in the government, it is considered the omnipotent one. It's not even God who is the omnipotent. Do you get that? Now, under, under Hegel's uh, concept, he is replacing the, the power of the state 
as being the omnipotent one. This is the idea of Karl Marx. Yan. Kaya kung, kung pag sinabi natin yung power ng state, it has become the power of the omnipotent one, binigyan mo ng, ng kapangyarihan ang state. You are acknowledging the state as the, the leader, as the one that gives light, and as the one that keeps moving everything just like the omnipotent one. And we only acknowledge that there is one omnipotent, and that is God. Because only is a Latin word for total and everything and all. Potent is the power uh, that is what we call potentate, meaning to say there is a power over all. And we know that the one that has a power over all creations in heavens and on earth, and everything in heavens and everything on earth and under the earth and everything under the earth in the water and everything in the water. There's only one omnipotent being and that is the absolute one. Yeah? Kaya, then, uh, kasunod niyan, si Rishi, all of these people, they prepared a way for higher criticism. Not to... Uh, exclude Charles Darwin, his theory of evolution. Kaya nga, sa ating pangbungag kanina, ang sinasabi, kapag ka ang evolutionary thought pinagsama mo sa criticism, ang meron sa'yo ay biblical criticism. Pag, pag sinabi nating biblical criticism, we are not preparing to the Holy Bible criticism we are referring to their criticism against the Bible. Yep. So, yan yung ating tinalakay sa higher criticism. Only two Old Testament source of documents are accepted or acknowledged. And the four books uh, denying the, the unity of the Mosaic authorship. So, they would deny the unity of the Pentateuch, yeah? And the book of Isaiah, for under higher criticism, they have divided into two parts. The lesser Isaiah and the major Isaiah. Parang, parang mapunta tayo doon sa the minor prophets and the major prophets. Okay, letter... Pointer number three, under higher criticism, the, the book of Daniel, they have acknowledged that as history and not prophecy. Well, we know better than that, that the book of Daniel is both historical and prophetical because even before the kingdoms have existed, it was already prophesied through a dream and through the interpretation that God has given to Daniel and Daniel conveyed and related to King Nebuchadnezzar who was troubled for the dream that he did not know and what was it that he had forgotten. Yeah? Okay. Kaya, then we have under the New Testament criticism or it is called the lower criticism there is Herman, there are three, uh, two of them, Herman uh, Raimaros, that he denied the miracles and he said that the New Testament writers were hawks or frauds or pseudo or false. And Gotthold said that the scriptures serves the primitive man as guide so that man did not really come to his development as being pictured by evolutionists. Because under evolutionary uh, concept, together with the process theology, that man is continually developing himself. Yeah? So that paano na ngayon yan? Ang tawag natin dyan, inconsistency of philosophers and the uh, historians. Why? Because they do not agree together. 
uh, maybe they have forgotten to do a general council of meeting in order to discuss what uh, Mr. Kant believed and Slyder Matter believed and Hegel believed and Charles Darwin believed and what Herman Raimaros stood and got all blessings to it. So all of this together, then when it is already printed and we are the readers and we are the recipients and we are the interpreters and we are the, the people to whom it is revealed to, then we come into a confusion. So if you are not putting a bracket or uh, you know a boundary line from one one to another, you know like the sidarim, we call that in the the Hebrew Bible the sidarim means you are putting orders, you are making uh, division and classification. Even in our recording in the library, we need classifications and we need the sidarim, and as well as that is what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. You put everything in sedering or in orders, accurately, perfectly, correctly. Yes, in everything. Kaya, paano na ngayon? Uh, at ang sinasabi, that man is pri primitive. And until now, are we primitive? If you are, uh, you belonging to a high class mind, as of today, you would not accept that you are a primitive person. Yeah? Especially if you have a degree. You would not accept that. Now that man was of age, his own reason, and uh, his own, oh, your, that means so you here, we are coming back into what we call the school of thought. The school of thought is having your own reasons. And his duty is sufficient enough. Kaya nga, pagka uh, makakasagupa nila si Calvin, ang sasabihin ni Calvin, may nakalimutan kayo. Yung reasons ninyo, hindi magiging totoo at sa sapagkat may nakalimutan kayo na one thing. And that one thing is man is so depraved of his sin, sinful nature, of his wickedness, that he cannot differentiate the truth from the untruth the lies to the truth the false and the truth yeah and also under this new testament criticism or lower criticism they attempt to read the, the new testament books based on the supposed evolution of authors pag nagread it ito at napunta ka sa evolution ng authors pupunta ka na doon sa millions of years ago. Yeah? Okay. The next is the uh, number five, which is the form criticism. It taught that the real truth of Christ is hidden beneath or under cultural layers. It means <coughs> magka-cultural layers mapupunta tayo doon sa tinatawag nating traditional, customary, what else? Uh, culture of the people. Kaya si Kristo, lagi niyang binibigay ang warning na ito. You do err because you do not know the scriptures. And that you violated the commandment of God because of the culture, the traditions of your fathers. Well, pagka ikaw ito, na-oppose ka sa ganitong concept, uh, maghunos dili ka muna. Alamin mo muna, mag-aaral ka muna tungkol sa Talmud. Sapagkat ang Talmud, whether you like it or not, dahil hindi ka naman hudyo at hindi ako hudyo, Pero because we are free to accept one another's concepts and views without uh, proselyting us, even if we avoid proselytism, mapupunta tayo doon sa Talmudic concept that in the Talmud, the interpretation of the, the five books of Moses, the Old Testament books, together with the traditions and culture 
they are all linked together. <coughs> Mapupunta tayo dyan later on. Okay. So, yan po yung ating review kung po doon sa how many ito? Five, five kinds of criticism. So that under form <coughs> criticism additional, it showed that the real truth of Christ is totally hidden. Hidden from what? In Romans 3 verse 4, God forbid, yes, let God be found true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that you might be justified in your words and might prevail or triumph when you come into the judgment day. That means to say, every one of us, the one that will be justified is the one who is always the truth. And if we did not listen to the truth from now on, we will come and find ourselves in shortage of that truth. And then we will find out that we have to accept that truth in the end, whether we like it or not. Okay, Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 3. And if some have no faith, will that make the faith of God without effect? Kung ang mga tao ay atheist and skeptic and agnostics and uh, what else? Uh, skeptics. Will that remove the faith of God? Will that abolish the faith of others in God? No. No way. Because God is always true. Yeah. Kaya yan po yung ating review doon sa five kinds of criticism. And it's, it's important that we, we know that. So considering tayo po ay magpapatuloy sa ating apologetics and church history, which this is a church history, our church history in apologetics and apologetics with church history. Considering what you know about Manson, why is it so important for God to break into man's situation in powerful supernatural ways? Ano yung tinatawag nating powerful supernatural ways? We call that miracles. And God using miracles when God was here on earth with us, with the, what we call the incarnate God, Christ Jesus. Okay. Why? Because ordinary ways of knowledge in a man are rendered uncertain and ambiguous because of man's sinful ways. Kaya ang tao hindi siya konbinsido kung ito ay ordinary. The only reason he believes that God, this must be God speaking when God is using miracles to convince him. And that is how God is breaking into man's situation by using miracles. Next question. Can you see how important the Bible is? Yung una na yan, na question natin kanina, why is it so important for God to break into man's situation in a powerful and supernatural ways? Why? The answer is because ordinary ways of knowledge are rendered uncertain or ambiguous because of man's sinful ways. All right. Question number two. Can you see how important the Bible is? Since actions will be misinterpreted, it is crucial that God's actions in the history must be explained so there is no misunderstanding. Ulitin ko. Ang aksyon ng tao ay pwedeng ma-misinterpret. But it is the crucial action of God in the history that would be explained well through the Bible so that there is no misunderstanding. 
this is exactly what the Bible does. It records what God has done and it explains the meaning of the actions of God. Ulitin ko. Ito ang ginawa ng Biblia. Inirecord niya kung ano ang mga ginawa ng Diyos through all these miracles through the time that Jesus was with us. That's why Jesus said, He proved it again and again. The works that I did and the miracles that I have done, it is my Father who is working with me. So which one are you stoning me for the miracles that I have done? And then they responded, it's not because of the miracles and all of these things that you have done, but because you have made yourself equal with God. Yeah. Kaya, ito na yun. So, parang ang hirap na makita ng tao, yung the Yehovah, into a Yeshua. Ang hirap nilang makita na kailangan ang Diyos para siya magpatunay na siya yung Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Kailangan niyang gagamitin ang miracles or the supernatural things against the naturalness of man. Yeah? Kaya the Bible as God's word is an articulate expression of the very nature of God. God who desires to break in into man's experience in a decisive way. So, yeah, kaya kung ang Diyos pumasok sa bawat karanasan ng tao para magpahayag sa tao, pag sinabi kong tao, ang pinutukoy ko, samkatauhan, Tagalog yan. Pag ilalagay natin yan sa English, mankind, human being. Yeah? In a decisive way. Decision ng Diyos yan. Kaya it is non-debatable, non-argumentable. We have nothing to do with that. Kasi it is a, the decision of the divine one, the creator. Bakit? Tayo ba nag-exist ba tayo dito? Noong ginawa ng Diyos ang mundo ito at ginawa niya ang unang tao? Meron ba tayong pakialam at meron ba tayong kapangyarihan? Dibatihin siya kung bakit nag ka sa ganitong paraan? You cannot do that, you know? Kasi, we always bow down and we always acknowledge our Almighty God, the Creator God. Yeah? Kaya nakakatakot eh. Pero kapag ang tao natuto ng konti, umangat ng konti, lumubo rin ang ulo, kaya ang tawag nila itiulo jina, Iti ulo na din makal sa Ilocano. Iti ulo, yan yung ginagamit theology, yung ulo niya lumaki. Di ba? Nakakatakot eh. Kaya ngayong panahon, pagka may pinag-aralan ka na, feeling mo lahat ng tao magbaw sa'yo, sumaludo sa'yo, mag-acknowledge sa'yo, at alam mo na, magsasalute. All right, question number three. Can you see why Christian apologists is working in harmony with the nature of a self-disclosing, meaning the revealing God? Nakita niyo ba yun? Kung paano ang Christian apologist. What is a Christian apologist? He is a Christian evidentialist. And he is a Christian defender of the true faith and true Christianity. Yeah? Alright. So what's the answer to that? Miracles are important way by which God gets the attention of men. Kaya lahat ng paraan, sabi ko sa'yo eh, kahit na mag, magtatatakbo ka, magtataparay ka, hahabulin ka ng Diyos. Why? Interesado siya sa tao. Dahil kung hindi siya interesado sa tao, bakit niya binigyan ng lahat ng atensyon ang tao? Yan ang sinasabi niya ni Haring David sa kanyang mga awit. That man that is so wicked, why are you so interested in man? Yan. 
And a miracle is not contrary against nature or science, but they are rare and unique events that will be working together with nature. You see, dahil gagamitin ng Diyos ang nature in order to perform a miracle. What is the nature? One for example, nature is yung dagat. Alright, that's nature. Pero para siya magkaroon ng miracle, lalakad siya sa ibabaw ng dagat. Ano pa? Para magkaroon ng miracle, yung nature na yan, kailangan siyang humiga sa common, ordinary na bangka para i- Anong tawag nun? Ibula-bula pataas. Nung matataas na halon. Na ang kinatatakutan. Na, alam mo ba kung sino itong manatakot? Mga mangingisda ito. Ang mga pangingisda, walang kinatatakutan sa laot. Pero alam nila, this is, this is not an ordinary storm. This is what they call wall. Na saan? Ililibing ka sa ilalim ng dagat, iikot yan eh. It's like the, the combination of the hurricane and the storm together na iikot siya, gagawa po siya ng abyss at ibabaon niya yung, yung bangka doon pababa. Yan ang kinatatakutan nitong mga disciples ni Jesus. That's why they said, care is thou not that we perish. Hindi mo ba alintana na kani ay mga lipol? Mapahama? But, Jesus Christ, natatandaan mo sa Christology natin na hindi pa tapos yan. Sa Christology natin na sinabi ko doon sa aklat ng mga awit na ang sinasabi roon narinig, nakita ng dagat at ng alon at ng tubig ang kanilang creator and therefore they trembled. Kaya nung sinabi ni Jesus nang tumayo siya, sabi niya kumayapak kayo. Peace, be still. Bakit kaya kailangan ng tao? Kailangan mo lagi ilalagay yung English, peace, be still. Kung pwede mo namang sabihin, kumaya pa kayo. Diba? Parang yung mga bata na nagkakagulo, sabi mo, oy, tigil. Diba? So, dahil maestro ito, makikinig sa kanya kahit ang dagat. Why? He was the Lord and the Master of the sea. Diba nun? Okay. Kaya, it is in the rare or the unique events that the dramatic elements would make it function in a special way. Imagine mo yan. Sa pinapadala, pinupost ko sa inyo ng mga messages, uh, si Jesus Christ, nung nasa ibabaw ng lupa, hindi siya, hindi siya lumalakad sa mga carpets, red carpets. Alam niyo yung red carpets, importante yan. Kung kinikilala ka na presidente, alright, and the big shot or the, the king or the prince of a certain kingdom, mula pa lang sa pagbaba ng aeroplano, i-spread yung red carpet na yan. All the way. Natandaan niyo, dito po sa bansa ng Pilipinas, tandang-tanda ko yan sapagkat nandun ako sa Luneta Park na pinanood ko yung pagdating ng Laning siya nga ang hari ng mga hari. Ang dagat, ang tubig ng dagat sumuporta sa kanya. That's why Jesus Christ was walking. Why? 
which one is the the hot water? All right. So number one kind of Christian apologist, Christian evangelist, Christian defender of faith. Ang meron tayo is the view. Tignan natin ang pananaw ng evidentialist. Itong Christian apologetics na evidentialist, they believe that gathering, piling up items upon items of scientific knowledge of archaeological and historical data, they are sufficient enough to convince the skeptics, the unbelievers, the atheist who doesn't believe in God, origin pa no para kang gusto mong sukatin ang taas ng langit at lupa at gusto mong sukatin din ang lalim ng damba gusto mong alamin gaano ang ang layo between uh, one end of the world to another end of the world yes kahit na lumipad ka pa ng lumipad ng eroplano i tell you mamamangha ka kapag nandoon ka sa impapawid Makakatulog ka lang, hindi mo na masukat. Ang aim mo, bago, bago nag-depart ang aeroplano, susukatin mo. Noong sinasabi na ng pilot, we are flying 36,000 feet high from here on this earth, kaya mong lumipad 36,000 feet without the airplane? di ba? Okay. So ngayon, kayo, kayo ang pumatol. Sa ating Christianity, we cannot really fathom that. The limitation of this view is that man is sin, uh, man sin, ang kasalanan ng tao, ang siyang nag- what a existentialist so either he does not see the supernatural for what it is or he is opposed to the idea that reason tests a revelation ang rason kasi ang reasoning power kailangan niyang subukan yung idea ng kapahayagan, revelation. What is more of the revelation? Anything that has been revealed as a truth. Paano kayo magbigay ng example ng revelation? The newspaper is a revelation of the newscast what's happening here in, uh, in the Philippines. If it is an international paper, of what is happening internationally. That is a revelation. It's a common, it's a natural revelation. Uh, the newscast, you know, the anchormen that are using broadcasting, they are also doing a revelation of what is happening throughout international and local. Yeah? Kaya, yung reasoning na yan, pag nanonood ka, pag nakikita mo, pag binabasa mo, Ititesting mo yan. Is that really true? Eh kasi marami tayong nababasa dyan. Alam nyo ba na ang fiction is a, a combination of the truth and the mindset of the writer? Yeah. Kaya ma ngayon, iku-question mo yung reasoning na yan. It represents the modern way of understanding an ancient documents. And it oversimplifies the complex of nature of verification or inquiry on the concept idea of theological beliefs or a divine revelation under view of evidentialism. Kailangan niyang sukatin, kailangan niyang subukan 
yung reasons na ito which is under theological beliefs or under divine revelation. Kaya, ang other necessary method in order to lead the unbelievers, the skeptics, the agnostics, the cynics, the atheists, to a single faith in Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Alam niyo yun? Well, kung hindi ka maniwala, lagay mo yan sa in subjectivity. The Bible is objective. Now, to make it subjective, basahin mo ang Bible, hindi mo naintindihan. You ask the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and then when you understand it very, very clear, as clear as the sun that is shining, then you know that the Holy Spirit Kita mo bahay mo para bumili ka ng Bible. Right? Eh kasi ang pinagmalaki niya, may Bible siya sa cellphone. Well, you know what? Hindi yan pwedeng idibati dito sa online. Yung tungkol sa Bible mo sa cellphone. Sapagkat from the very beginning, ang Diyos, kanyang iningatan ang Bible, hindi cellphone. Okay? Masalamat ka na lamang, napunta tayo dito sa milinya na meron tayong gadgets. Eh kung tayo kaya nabuhay sa panahon ni Pablo, ano sa tingin nyo? Wala naman cellphone noon. Hmm? Kaya, let us put aside the debatable items. Kung ikaw matalino at pinag pinaglalaban mo ang gadgets, well, go ahead. Swing into it. Dive, Edward. Wala akong pakialam. Number two. The view of another Christian apologetic, apologist or Christian defender, or Christian evidentialist, ang tinatawag natin the view of probabilities. Ano yung probabilities? It has something to do with historical data. Under this view, under this concept or this principle, they believe that Christian evidences can create Favorable case. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng probabilis pag itagalog natin yan? Uh, Sister Yoli, is it probable, is it possible that you are going to come to Cebu next month? Ang sas sasagot ko, I think it's probable. High degree of probability. If the Air Asia is going to fly. If not, under historical data, I cannot fly. I do not have wings yet. I have to wait for the rapture. <laughs> okay? Hmm. Under this view, they believe that the Christian evidences Ay, oo. Kasi kung alam historical fit, kung paano nalaman na importante pala si Pablo, si Pedro, at si John. Okay? <laughs> ano bang ginawa ni Pedro, ni Pablo, at ni John? Hmm. Dito sa amin, present sa amin kalagitnaan, si Pedro. <laughs> Hindi po siya Pedro <laughs> ng Bible. <laughs> Pedro lang talaga siya si Ralde, junior pa. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> kailangan ko po ang uh, one, uh, mag-smile. Okay? Kapayaan nyo lang ako mag-smile. <laughs> Alam nyo kung bakit? Pag hindi ako nag-smile at nakasimangot ako, kakasa ako ng tudo. Matatakot kayo. Akala nyo galit ako. 
<laughs> at least pagkaganito, hindi ako galing. Ano ang presentation ng arguments na ito? On behalf of Christianity, under historical faith, it dislodges release intellectual roadblocks which hinders the belief. Kaya, kung uh, sa argumentation na ito, ang isang tao, wala siyang pananampalataya, magiging roadblock ito sa kalsada ng kanyang puso at isipan. born he was living and he performed miracles when he was here on earth he was crucified he was buried and the third day he rose again from the grave and that he had ascended and that he promised he is going to descend or come back while he was three days in the grave it says there that he descended to hell and there in hell he reminded all the people that they that those that are in hell that they why did they not believe the preaching and the warnings of noah during that time kasi natatandaan mo pinakamarami na high When Jesus went down there, he reminded them, he took the keys from Satan and then he up. After that, he resurrected from the grave and that was when, before going up, he had given gifts to the church, which we call the apostolic gifts. Yeah. The gift of the apostle, the teacher, the prophet, the evangelist, uh, the pastors, and the teachers. Yeah? Okay. So, suppose read the Bible. So, what value do you think would be for you to do? Show unbeliever. Ang answer? And the Bible is revealing the mankind. That's why he had given his life and that he shed his blood. That God acted according to the Bible as we read. And that God break into man's experience in a decisive way so that man would know God intimately. Is it possible? Is it probable that you that man would know God intimately? Because what I know, there was somebody, a leader of a church, that he removed his item, claim that you have you are intimate with God and that you have relationship with God. Because to say that you have relationship with God is immoral. To say that you are intimate with God is immoral. Well, that is the other way around of looking behind the words. Looking behind the picture. Our uh, evidentialist apologist number three, 
Christian apologist. We call that the view of the negative. The negative. In a speculative philosophy. A name is speculation, people, of the truth of Christianity purely on a theoretical grounds. Much of the modern theology and theologies, as you have studied in religions, if you can still remember, are the neo-Orthodox church and beliefs. Neo means new because it is a Greek word. And then orthodox means generally accepted. All right? The neo-orthodox, particularly of the philosopher Bart and Boltzmann. These are two philosophers. It falls into this category. What is that? An appeal to evidences or proofs is considered either offensive or impossible. Kung gagamit ka daw ng evidences, proy ba, dalawang bagay ang sasabi nila. It is offensive, nakakatisod, it is impossible, impossible. Yeah? Pero, yan ang nangyayari. Sa, pa, sa view ng negativist, it is purely on speculation. They will do an it is speculation. You are proving that God created the, the earth from the very beginning. They are going to make you prove, according to their negative item, that the earth did not come from any creationist, but that it, it existed in a big bang. That is scientific theory. Baba, ibabalik ka niya doon sa school of thoughts, doon sa naturalism, at babalik ka niya sa creationism, at ibabalik ka niya sa evolutionism. Kasi ang dami ng connection yan. Okay. The number four view of Christian apologies, Christian defender, Christian uh, philosopher, is the view of Calvinism from John Calvin. He was a very important theologian, theologian on the 16th century. And uh, apologist Bernard Rahm was impressed of the teaching of Calvin. Ano ang naka-impress kay apologist Bernard Rahm? Ang sa teaching ni Calvin, ito. That the natural man is so depraved. Pag sinabi natin so depraved, so wicked, so immoral, so sinner, that, ito yung sa grammar natin, pagka gumamit ka ng so, iso, ang reason ng that. You can description. Man is so depraved that his reasoning ability is unable by itself to sort, sort out, differentiate, to sort out the truth from the untruth. Ito yung paulit-ulit natin na nabanggit na. Nakabanggit na ako four times. Kasi while I'm talking, it is recorded in my brain and in my sight. Yeah? The reasoning ability is unable to sort out the true from the false. Kaya, paano yun? If you are a follower of this belief, of this Mr. Blanc, and you happen to become evangelical, paano na ngayon yun? Because you are so depraved, so a sinner, that being so a sinner, that you do not have the right reasons the proper reasons, the inability to function uh, 
and dividing. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. Pag nag-follow ka sa anumang religion, sa anumang beliefs, yeah, at hindi ka nag-follow kay Jesus, likely you are bound to the road of detour and destruction. You're not bound to the road and the stairs going up to heaven. Okay. So it's not helpful to argue with unbelievers. Marami sa atin para mo lamang ipakita na ang galing-galing mo talaga na debate. Pwede siyang magkatawang tao through an unbeliever. Siya mismo ang magdi-debate sa'yo. So kung di mo memorize ang Bible mo, memorize niya yung quotation niya doon sa Bible, ay, tapos hindi mo kaya sabihin, it is written again. Yeah. I believe it is a fine thing in showing the seriousness of the effects of sin in man. Kaya nga, lagi natin sinasabi, kahit na anong ganda ng payo mo, kahit na anong baba ng salita mo, kapag ang tao kausap mo at walang Kristo sa buhay at puso isipan ito, kahit na kaano kabuti ng kanyang pag hindi niya talaga maunawaan kung ano ang liwanag ang katukat. Mahirap eh. Kaya nga, lagi mo talagang gagawin. Hilahin mo talaga muna. Ikaw muna. Tanggap ka muna sa Panginoon bago ko sasabihin sa'yo ang sagot ng tinatanong mo. Dahil kung hindi ka tatanggap sa Panginoon, Hay, walang magpapaliwanag sa'yo ng sagot na yan. Yung sinasabi ko, para lamang yan, tinatapon doon sa malayo na ang nakasara ay ang langit at lupa. So you do not hear my voice. Ayan. Okay. Ang tawag na uh, mag-convency, ano yun, mag-persuade sa tao, na tumanggap, na magsisi, na magbalik loob sa Panginoon. We call that pre-evangelism. Sa Bible, marami tayong proto-evangelism. Noong panahon, taliwan, talika, usap tayong dalawa. Kita mo yun? Bitoy na yun. Sabi niya yan, nagpapatunay yan ng dami. Kung kayang-kaya mong bilangin yan, ganun makakayanan ang bilang ng iyong descendants ng mga anak at mga lahi. Okay. Pero, kung hindi mo kayang bilangin yan, hindi mo rin malalaman kung paano ang bilang ng iyong uh, descendants. So, ang tawag natin dyan, sa panahon, ni Abraham, ang Diyos, kinausap niya, kinandinsin niya ito, ang tawag natin pre- and proto-evangelism. Tinawag na proto because it is for sa darating na evangelistic uh, view natin. And then it is pre-evangelism because God said that the nations will be blessed through you. Kaya kailangan... Ano ang follow doon sa altar call na yon? Ang follow doon na verse kapag binabasa niyo sa altar call, ang sabi roon, And Abraham believed God of everything that he said. And it says there, and it was founded righteousness for him. On that day, par ang, ka ang katumbas yan, on that day, Abraham got saved. Abraham got, the, got justified. Okay. So putting the package together, we have a general view of the whole thing, ang tawag natin, synoptic gospel. So nasa synoptic tayo. Ano ang kaulugan ng synoptic? A general view. Pag nag-synoptic tayo, kukunin natin ang Mark, Luke, and John. Ano, ano? Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Silang tatlo. Sila mostly ang nagbibigay 
ng synonymous view sa tinatawag natin synoptic, kaya nga tinawag ito synopsis. Ano ba ang other simple word ng synopsis? Harmony. The harmony of the Gospels. The synoptic vision and the significance for dealing with doubt. Pag-aaralan natin ang various kinds ng kung klaseng doubts. Nakakatakot kung hindi mo alam ang sampung klaseng doubts. Yeah? Okay. Synoptic vision muna tayo. Itong synoptic vision, ang tawag natin dito circle number three. Kasi there are, ang circle three, ang tawag sa kanya synoptic vision. The reason tinawag na because it is a total with uh, what is this the most sense out of man ano yung number one ang ta ang mundo ng tao so lalagay ko man is number one man his world and his relationship with God under vision which is self which makes his which makes man his world and his relationship in a total meaningful ways and thereby it furnishes purpose and direction in the world of man yeah importante yung synoptic vision na yan bakit tinawag natin vision alam niyo ba sa apologetics and sa church history. Pag sinabi natin vision, para kang gagamit ng high-powered telescope. That in a high-powered telescope, titignan mo doon sa outer space and see if you can see the stars and if you can count very, very few of them. And yet, it is the highest power. But you know, in our study, the highest form of telescope that we can use in order to see the magnificent creation of God is the Bible. So the Bible is the mighty telescope of God. Okay? Kasi, wala, scientist, wala tayong laboratory. Okay, ayan yung anak ko, doktor. Yung isang anak ko, nurse. Pero eh, hindi man ako punta sa laboratory nila. Kaya sila lang nakakaalam kung ano yung nandun. Okay? Kaya we still needed the Bible. Circle number one tayo. Dahil natapos yung circle three. Circle number one. He is convinced that the truth of his faith by the actions of the living which makes the difference. Itagalog natin. Sa circle one, kumbinsido siya na ang katotohanan ng kanyang pananampalataya ayon sa mga ginawa at gawa ng buhay na Diyos sa kanyang daigdig. Alright. Now, because ginamit dito ang cosmos, so, ang tinutukoy dito, the outer space, yeah, the, what we call this, the cosmos, itong world kasi natin, it is it's called Tebel. Okay. So that, it makes the difference. Yan, dito mo nakikita ano ang kaibahan kapag ka nakita mo ang katotohanan ng pananampalataya na ipinahayag sa aksyon ng buhay na Diyos. Hmm? Magkawa kayo ng example. Ano ang kapangyarihan, katotohanan ng pananampalataya na ipinahayag ayon sa aksyon ng buhay na Diyos. Tignan natin ang aksyon ng buhay na Diyos na nag-confront na sinalubong na hinarang si Apostol Pablo na noon ang pangalan ay Saulo na may dala siyang uh, documents para usigin, para kunin ang mga 
uh, Hebrew believers, Christians, the newborn Hebrews, that were hide that, that they were hiding in Damascus. Yeah, Damascus is the capital city of Syria, and that doon na sa katanghali ang tapat. Bali, ang aksyon ng Diyos, sinalubong siya at kinausap siya at ang unang confrontation sa kanya, Saulo, Saulo, bakit mo ako inuusig? Hindi ba? Ang isang, ang isang pariseyo, ang isang uh, abogado, ang isang panatiko na follower ng Judaism nag-uusig sa tanghaling tapat at the Nekonim alright? The Nekon is the perfect day. Ang tawag sa Hebrew, ang perfect day yung alas dosin ng tapat alas dosin ng tanghali. They call that perfect day. Okay. So that sinabi, bakit mo ako pinag-uusig? Imagine mo, sino ba itong nagsasalita? Eh, si Pablo ang alam niya na salita, yung written. Hindi niya na nakita sa buong buhay niya at narinig ang salita na oral. Ito tayo ngayon. Pag nag-written at nag-oral, ipokombine eh, mo, mapupunta tayo sa Talmud. Yeah? Okay. Ganon din naman ang targom. Pag nag-written at nag-oral, pag samahin mo yan, pupunta ka ngayon sa targom. Okay. So, yung Binabasa na yan ni uh, sa Saulo, sa dati niyang pangalan, ang Targum at ang Talmud. Na ang nakikita niya ay ang written, pero yung totoong oral galing somewhere from the invisible one, hindi niya narinig pa yun for the first time. Kaya nga, kung ikaw yan, na makasalanan ka, at ang tao gusto magpakamatay. Lulundag na siya sa tulay. Pagkatapos may narinig siyang tinig. Saan galing? Sa labas? Hindi. Galing sa loob niya. Galing sa isipan niya. Wag, wag kang magpakamatay. May plano ako sa buhay mo na maganda. Dumaba ka riyan ngayon din. Diba? And what's the next thing? Sabi niya, sino yun? Sabi niya ng Panginoon, ako, kinakausap kita. Baba! O di, bumaba ka na. Tapos, biro mo, nasa tulay yan eh. Luluhod na siya. Panginoon, ikaw ba yan? So, paano niya nalaman, Panginoon yun? Wala mang sabi sa kanya, wala pang nag wala pa siyang proto evangelism Di ba? Hindi ka pa dumating doon para mag-evangelize sa kanya. <laughs> Pero sabi niya, Panginoon, lumuhod na siya. Kung ikaw nga yan, kinakausap mo ako, eh po ako. So, patawarin mo na ako. Sino nagsabi sa kanya na manalangin siya ng kapatawaran? Di ba? Hindi ba action ng Diyos yan? Para may pakita ang katotohanan ng kananong palataya. Kaya nga eh. Ang Diyos na lumalang ng tao, interesado siya sa tao na nilalang niya. Kaya huwag mo sasabihin, hindi ako mahal ng Diyos dahil hindi ako mahal ng asawa ko. Mahal, kahit na hindi ka mahal ng asawa mo, mahal ka ng Diyos. Importante yun. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Uh, maraming mga tao. Ang, ang logic dyan, sabi niya, hindi ako mahal ng asawa ko, hindi ako mahal ng amo ko, hindi ako mahal ng anak ko, therefore, hindi ako mahal ng Diyos. Rung, mahal ako ng Diyos, ito ang logic. Mahal ako ng Diyos, kahit hindi ako mahal ng asawa ko, hindi ako mahal ng anak ko, hindi ako mahal ng amo ko, equals the premise and the verdict, mahal ako ng Diyos. Di ba? O, oh, dahil ang totality, mahal ka ng Diyos, yun ang importante, yun ang paniwalaan mo. Di dahil yan, yung katotohanan ng kananang palataya mo, dahil yan ang aksyon ng Diyos. Okay? Circle number two tayo. Ang Christian... Because he believes that the Christian faith gives him the most adequate synoptic vision that there is with reference pertaining to man, to humanity, to the world, and God. So, ang circle three, magkokonik po siya 
a circle 2, magkukonek siya sa circle 3, which is the other word, sign of equation. Dahil sa circle 2, naniniwala siya, nananampalataya siya, na ang pananampalatayang kristyano ay magbibigay sa kanya ng sapat na sign of equation. Ano yun? Patungkol sa tao, patungkol sa kapwa-tao, patungkol sa sanglibutan at patungkol sa Diyos. Bakit? Kasi ang synoptic vision, it is a total package. Ano yung total package? Total package that life is meaningful. Natatandaan nyo sa bungad-bungat natin doon sa kay Star Trek na ang sabi nila, life is meaningless. Therefore, dahil meaning, meaningless, walang kahulugan ang buhay, anong ending nila? They committed suicide, nagpakamatay. Pero dito, sa circle 3, sa synoptic vision, life is meaningful. Na ipaglalaban mo na mabuhay ka para kay Kristo dahil yan ang plano niya sa'yo. Amen? So sa tingin mo, itong pagtuturo ko, kasali pa ang evangelistic dito, medyo. Pero, ikaw nang bahala doon. It's science of a world and life. Pag sinabi na sa meaning ng philosophy, dahil yaan ang kabuuhan ng meaning ng philosophy. Philosophy is a world and life view. Philosophy is an overall view of things. Philosophy is bits and pieces put together. Yeah? Okay. That, under that philosophy, which is, kailangan po niya ang synoptic vision, it is presenting a general view of the whole thing, talking to the first three Gospels, which is our example of synoptic view. Kaya tinawag nga ang three Gospels as the synopsis. Pagka kayo po ay nag-aral ng synoptic Gospel, huwag kayong pupunta doon sa ready-made na. Isa-isahin mong pag-aralan at isulat mo isa-isa ang Matthew. Natapos ka ng Matthew, isunod mo ang Mark. Isunod mo ang Luke. Pero dito, sa apologetics at sa history, especially sa archaeology, mauna lagi sa hanay ang Mark. Susunod si Matthew, susunod si Luke. Sila yung tatlo na magbubuo ng Synoptic Gospel ng New Testament. Okay. So that, under that, a scientist uses hypothesis. What is an, a hypothesis? It is a proposal intended to explain certain facts of observation, certain facts or observations. Okay? Ano po yung katumbas ng hypothesis? A phenomenal argument. Under phenomenal argument, we know that the whole world sees the rest why it's called phenomenal argument. The possibility theory, it is a tentative insight into the natural world. A concept that is not yet verified, but if it is true, would certain would explain certain facts or phenomena, such as an exceeding or unbelievably great. Ano yung certain facts ng phenomena? Example natin. Sa so Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 to 13, mababasa natin, Joshua commanded the sun to stand still. Doon sa science, in the field of science, they said that uh, the solar, there is one item 
that is lacking in the solar system sa kanyang chronos sa kanyang time difference meron daw isang lacking item what was the lacking item that was when Joshua commanded the sun sun s u n sun to stand still so we don't pronounce that sun we don't pronounce that son we pronounce that sun yeah as in a uh. that is to stand still ang tawag natin diyan phenomenal argument kaya sa hypothesis na ito Socialist philosopher, okay, under at magbilang tayo ng isa si Immanuel Kant. There are three elements that compose the Christian synoptic. One, factual element. Under factual element, we call that the archaeology. So, factual elements, then tayong babanggitin, biblical history. Itong later na geography, ancient history, comparative linguistics of ancient languages, critical study of documents, they are all under study or the science of archaeology. Because ang archaeology, sasabihin niya, saan ang location na natagpuan, nagdag-discovered nag sila something. Ano ang na-discovered nila? Sa discovery nila, nagsasaad ito ng history ng isang bansa o ng history ng mga tao o ng history ng civilization. Alright. The comparative linguist na ba, nakita nila, na-discover nila ang Ostracas at in Latin and it was they are written in Greek. Yeah? Kaya meron tayong tinatawag linguistic of ancient languages and then the study of the documents. Then they would see whether the documents was uh, written in how many years ago. Kaya, number two, the interpretative elements. Number three, personal elements. Under interpretative elements, nangangailangan ito ng hermeneutics. Sapagkat ang interpretative elements, it needs the philosophy of history, the study of history of philosophy, and the study of psychological understanding of man. Alright. So, kailangan po natin alamin ano-ano ang mga languages ng hermeneutics. Yeah. Sa languages ng hermeneutics, ito po ang ating malalaman. We have number one, historical language. Sa historical language na ito, importante para tama yung interpretation ng isang mga ngaral o ng isang komentarista ng isang guro o ng isang interpreter. Alright? Under historical language, for example, makita natin si Moses na he was pulled out from the river Nile of Egypt, kaya tinawag historical. Once upon a time, there was a man, a baby, named Moses. And there was a civilization of Egypt. And there was the history of the river Nile from that time up to this time, which they call that uh, the power of God. And then we would say that that's why ang tawag po nila sa Egypt, the bread basket of Rome. Bakit ka mo? Sapagkat ang common term dyan, Moses was, was in a basket. Alright. Secondly, the, the bread, the provision of food supply comes from Egypt. 
That's why ang tawag ng Roman sa Egypt is their bread basket. Okay? Can you find that in Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 to 10? Number 2, sa Poetsayan Minyotics, kailangan mong alamin ang poetical language. Like the Song of Songs, the Latin word for canticum or canticulos or canticles, yeah, which is in the Hebrew word sher hasherim hayam yam, in canticum chapter 4 verse 12 up to all the way chapter 5 verse 1, you will see a poetical language, although it is poetry. Ano ba yun? Uh, balagtasan. But at the same time, meron po siyang typology. And at the same time, meron po siyang regulation na hindi natin nakita. Okay? Kaya ang tawag yan sa kanya, if Ecclesiastes was the life of wandering, the song of songs is the life of rest. Sa Ecclesiastes, wala silang kapahima, kapahingan. They kept wandering around. Whereas in the Song of Songs, they have come to full rest. Okay. Number three. We call that, kasi pinag-aralan natin ang tinatawag languages. Yeah? Number three. The phenomenal language. Ito yung kakukot kalong ko lang kanina. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, Jesus said, Your heavenly Father, He caused the Son to shine to all men. And it caused the rain, the, the, the rain to be sent both to the wicked and to the just. That means to say, ang sunshine, hindi siya inaangkin ng mga matuwid na tao lang or the saints. Ganun din naman ang rain. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na si Pero, he is called the Ra. Ang ibig sabihin ng Ra, he is called the God, the sun, the sun god. Yeah. Meron pa doon, yung another pharaoh, he is called the rain god. Okay? Pero, nakita natin na ang Diyos, sabi niya ganyan, being merciful, he sends both this rain and the sun to the righteous and to the non-righteous, to the Egyptians who would look up to him and to the non-Egyptians who did not look up to him. And yet, God considered that they are human beings, that they are His creations, that they would die if He would not send them rain or water from above, and that their food supply would be cut off and die if He would not cause the sun to shine. Yeah. Ano bang process yan? Sa kailangan ng halaman ang araw para sa ganyan, the chlorophyll ng halaman mabubuhay. Number four, the symbolical language. As in the dream of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2 verse 31 to 38. Yan yung binanggit ko kanina. Kaya naniniwala tayo na ang Daniel, it was historical as well as prophetical. Because the kingdoms were already prophesied what would exist. If you are going to study the book of the Talmud and the Targum, you will also be able to see that in that book, I added siya according to Apocrypha and it is quoted in Targum, yeah, as well as the Talmud, the book of Esther. More letters and more books of the book of Esther. And according to the book of Esther, she had counted and had written ten kingdoms. Yeah. Eh, itong pinag-aaralan natin sa biblical prophecy dito sa kay Prophet Daniel. Yeah? Not only a prophet but a statesman. Eh, there were only seven kingdoms up to the time that the Messiah, the stone, will come down from heaven. The kingdom that shall never end. At to this Esther, book, she had written 10 kingdoms in all. Kaya ito ang ibig ko sabihin na kaya tayo nag-aaral para nadadagdagan ang ating kaalaman. 
together ang guro at ang mga tinuturuan o ang other guro kapag ka napapakinggan ninyo. This helps us together. Kaya nga, meron mga bagay sa ibang guro na wala doon sa iba. At meron doon sa ibang guro na meron sila at wala naman doon sa iba. Pero kung tayo sama-sama na nag-aaral at magkalakit na ating ibabahagi ang ating kaalaman at ating nadiskubrihan equals para tayong si Columbus. Yan yung message ko kanina, di ba? Na supposing si Columbus tinigil niya. Uh, that was yesterday. Supposing tinigil niya ang kanyang voyage. Anong mangyari? Are we going to discover other parts of the world just like Columbus discovered? Yeah? Okay. Kaya kailangan natin pag-aaralin yan. So ang symbolical language, the symbols of that statue is symbolic to the future kingdoms that would exist from the time of the uh, the old Babylonian Empire going to the Neo-Babylonian Empire up to the time of the Messianic Kingdom. Right. Number five, the proverbial language. Nang sabi roon, kaya tayo meron tayong proverbs. They call this the writings. They call this sages. They call this the book of wisdom. Because, for example, we will learn in Proverbs 26, 17. Huwag kang makialam sa gulo ng iba. Sapagkat kung makikialam ka, para ka na rin tao na hinawakan mo ang tenga ng aso. Ang aso, ayaw na ayaw hinawakan ng tenga. The moment hinawakan mo yung tenga niya, pakagatin ka niya talaga, lalapain ka niya. Di ba? Yung mga nanay, tinitingot ang tenga ng mga anak. Ano sa tingin niyo? Masaya ba yan na remembrance at anong tawag niyo? Sa reminiscing ng anak mo pagdating ng araw, gusto niya ba yung ginawa mong piningot mo tenga niya? Well, o ano pa, kung piningot mo ang anong tawag niya? The gruin. Singit. Kaya ang anak mo, mamimingot din ng tenga at mamimingot din ng sini. Kasi what you have done, you are going to live. Pero yung sinasabi ng Proverbs, pag nakikialam ka sa gulo ng iba, parang hinawakan mo ang, te ang aso sa tenga. Kakagatin ka niya. Kaya wag na wag mong hawakan ang aso sa tenga. Ayaw na ayaw ng aso hawakan sa tenga. Kasi may tendency siya na ang Aware siya, ang instinct niya, titingutin mo ang tenga niya. Number six, the cultural language. Ano yung cultural language? For example, sa John chapter 13 verse 14, si Jesus Christ, hinugasan niya ang mga paa ng disciples. Tanong niyo ngayon, bakit? Marumi ba ang paa nila? Hindi. Kasi according to manners and customs, Kapag nagtatanggap ka ng isang panauhin sa tahanan mo, ang una mong gagawin, ikaw ay babati sa kanya ng biso-biso. They call that, Asalam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Yan, biso-biso. Kiss, salam, shalom. Pagkatapos niyan, lagyan mo ng oil, paupuin mo siya may oil na ilalagay sa kanyang ulo. Tanda yon na nire-respeto mo siya. Okay, sunod niyan, meron kang palanggana with water at saka toalya na hugasan ang kanyang paa at lalagyan siya ng pabango. Hindi e mabango na ang iyong bisita. Pero so far, kay Jesus Christ, walang gumawa niyan sa kanya. But that is their customs and you will be able to read that in Talmud. So, the Talmud already told them the customs and the manners of the Hebrews. But why is it that they did not fulfill or they did not execute that kind of customs? So Jesus was reminding them of their cultures and their manners that this has to be done among the saints, especially the saints who are called by Jesus Christ. 
Number seven, the spiritual language. Na in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 to 8, verses 1 to 8, mababasa natin about love. And the word there in the in the English is charity, which is the agape. Okay? At ang sabi ni Apostol Pablo, if I have language of angels, kahit na ang salita ko ay salita ng angel, which is a spiritual language, but if I have no love or charity, I am nothing. Kaya dito po, pinapaliwanag ang tinutukoy na spiritual language na napaka-importante sa spiritual language, kinumpir niya ang pag-ibig doon sa lingwahe ng mga anghel. Na ang lingwahe na pag-ibig at ang lingwahe ng anghel, they are one and the same. You why? Because the angelic beings are from God and this kind of love ang nire-refer dito is the agape love. The agape love is the heavenly love, the divine love. Okay? This is not the erotic love. This, not, this is not Eden, the Cleo love. Yeah? Okay. Then number eight, we call that the tran anthropomorphic language. From the word anthropos. Anthropos is man. Morphos is the transformation. Yeah. How, how it is. Like in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 14. Ang sabi roon, the spirit lifted me up. And the hand of my God was upon me. Ang tawag natin yan, the transformation of man. When the spirit of God is holding man at ang kanyang interpretation ng Espiritu ng Diyos, itinaas siya. At ang kamay ng Diyos ang may hawak sa kanya. Nilagay mo in one bracket together ang God, ang kamay niya, at ang Espiritu ng Diyos. Kaya nga, the anthropos and the metamorphos are joined together. That it, it is being said how God has an interest in human being, especially according to the picture of Prophet Ezekiel. Then Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Let us build. And they strengthen their hands for the work. Pinalakas nila ang kanilang kamay. That's not a literal term na pinalakas ang kamay. It is what we call the anthropos morphos language which is the language of man, meaning to say the hand of man is going to be strengthened with a determination to build. Kaya hindi po yan literal na ang kamay niya, pinalakas niya. Marami tayong mga kamay na malakas na wala namang ginawa. At marami tayong mga kamay na hindi malakas pero ang daming na ginagawa. For example, ako. Mas, laging masakit ang aking kamay after ng marami akong typing na ginagawa at nababasa sapagkat hindi ako pwedeng kumain na hindi naghugas at nagsabon ng kamay. You see that? Number nine, figurative language. In Acts chapter 15 verse 10, we have, we can read, the imposed yoke of burden upon the disciples. Yeah? And the yoke here is also, it is a figure, a symbol of sin, it is a symbol of usual habits, it is a symbol of bondage. And uh, what's that? Slavery. Kaya also, it is a symbol of togetherness. Natandaan nyo na ang dalawang baka, iisa ang kanilang pamatok para sa ganon sila ay magbabaka ng field o ng bukid. At ang sabi ni Jesus, kunin ninyo ang aking pamatok sapagkat ito ay magaan. At ang pamatok ko ay ma may karunungan. See? So that my burden is light. Yun ang sinasabi niya. Typological language, nasa number 10 na tayo na klase ng language. The Old Testament fulfilled in the New Testament. 
In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, sinasabi roon na tayo ay mga buhay na bato na pinapatayo ng Diyos as the spiritual house. Pero sa langit, talagang ang kanyang ang kanyang tahanan ay puno ng maraming hiyas. Imagine mo na ang bawat pillar is one one big super pearl. Perlas yun. Dito sa atin, ang perlas, pinag-aagawan. Napakalingit. Mas malaki pa ata. O kaya maybe kasing laki ng kuko ng hinliliit natin. Or maybe kasing laki ng hinlalaki ng kuko natin ang perlas. Pero doon sa langit, ang perlas is one column. Anong tawag ninyo dyan? Poste, pillar. Pero the European people, they do not call they do not call that poste pillar, they call that column. Yeah? Kaya ini-expand natin ang ating language. Ano po 'yon? Na sabi niya, tayo ay mga buhay na bato. Pero tayo ang gagawin ng Diyos na kanyang spiritual na tahanan. We call that typological Pagka kayo ay nag-aaral ng typology, especially in the study of tabernacle and everything that is outside and inside of the tabernacle of God through Moses, napaka-importante at napakahaba at napakalawak na pag-aaral. And also, maa-appreciate mo ang picture ni Jesus sa lahat ng bahagi ng tabernacle ng Diyos na kanyang pinayag kay Moses sa wilderness. Bamidbar. Okay, in the Hebrew. Language number 11 is parabolic language. Which is, in Luke chapter 15, verse 8 to 10, we will see a woman with a 10 silver coins na wala niya yung isa. At hindi siya pwedeng titigil hanggat hindi niya makuha yung one silver coin na nawala niya. Bakit? Sampo yan eh. Ang sampo na yan, ang tawag natin dyan, uh, aras sa kasalan. At napakahalaga yan. Pag nagkulang ng isa ang aras na yan, supposedly, ang sasabihin ng husband, meron siyang kalagu yung iba. Na yung aras ng asawa niya ay hindi niya iningatan, binawasan niya ng isa, binigay niya sa kalagu niya. But, para sa ganyan, kapag nalaman niyan ng buong bayan, ang tao yan o ang babae niyan na nagkaroon ng infidelity laban sa kanyang asawa, ang tawag natin sa prison term niyan, cheated her husband, is ilalagay sa gitna, babatuhin ng lahat hanggang mamatay. Yan ang parusa. Sa infidelity or cheating against the husband as well as the husband cheating against the wife. Kaya malaki ang parusa. Ang parusa is kamatayan. Kaya nga kung hindi tayo namamatay sa ganyang kaparusahan and yet we are existing in this generation, ang tawag natin the greatest mercy of God. Because under the law of God, we should have been already eradicated and had been judged according to that law. The number 12 language is we call the doctrinal language. Okay, balikan pala natin yun, yung 10 coins. So, hinanap niya ng hinanap hanggat matagpuan niya. Nang natagpuan niya yung isang coin na yun, uh, nagsindi siya ng ilaw, nag-rejoice siya, nanaw siya sa buong community ng kanyang mga kapitbahay, at ang sabi niya, mag-rejoice kayo sa akin sapagkat yung isa na nawawala ko, natagpuan ko. And they would rejoice. Meaning to say, pwede siyang maganda ng kainan para sa sa bayan. At natatandaan ninyo na ito yung sinasabi ni Jesus Christ sa parable niya doon sa 100 sheep na ang isa ay nawala at ang isa ay naglakbay o na uh, naglayas o nag-astray o pumunta saan-saan. Nang sabi ni Jesus, iniwan ang 99, hinanap ang isa at nang matagpuan, siya ay nagalap. Ganon din naman ang sabi niya sa langit Kapag may isang kaluluwa na makasalanan na nagbalik loob sa Diyos, ang kalangitan at lahat ng anghel sa langit ay mga gala. Sapagkat ang isang kaluluwa na noon ay nawala, ngayon ay natangpo. 
kasalukuyan at bumalik. Naglambalik, Lord, sa Diyos. See? Ganon din naman doon sa ten coins niya. Nasa wakas, nagpapatunay ito na hindi nawawala at tapat ang asawang dito sa kanyang asawang lalaki. Again, it has something to do, not only that it is a parabolic language, but it has something to do with the manners and customs of the marital. Again, mababasa mo yan kung alam mo ang Talmud. Okay. So, number 12, the doctrinal language. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says there, we are being justified by faith and we have peace with God. Tayo ay napawalang sala. Yan ang Tagalog translation yan sa pananampalataya. At tayo ay may kakayapaan kasama ang Diyos. But because anong trabaho ng justification? Ang trabaho ng justification is ibalik lo tayo, i-reconcile tayo sa Diyos. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng peace. Why? Because ang makasalanan at ang Diyos sa kanyang kasalanan na pumagit na between God at ng tao na makasalanan, ito ay naghiwalay sa kanya sa Diyos. At ang tawag niya ng tao sa kanyang kasalanan, he became the enemy of God. And because he was the enemy of God, there was no peace between God and that man, the sinner. And Jesus Christ came in order to make peace between man and God so that he reconciled the man that was the enemy of God and, and that because of Jesus Christ who had paid the sins of this man, he reconciled and restored that to God and therefore the two of them who became peace, peaceful together. Ngayon, paano niya ginawa yan? He had offered himself as the peace offering unto God dahil ang tao kapag nagkaroon ng sigalut o away maging mag-asawa o magkaibigan, ikaw ay gumagawa ng paraan na kayo ay magbati kaya ikaw ay nagbibigay ng alay regalo ng tawag mo peace offering. Yeah? So that's a peace offering na yan. Nagbati na kayong dalawa kaya sabi mo, sige bati na tayo. Ito yung peace offering ko. Alam niyo may mga tao na hindi sila bokative. Hindi sila bokal. Pero malalaman mo na gumagawa siya ng peace offering nang magbigay siya ng regalo, nang nilato at nilotuan kanya ng masarap nung nagdala siya ng masarap na pagkain sa iyo. Hindi mo na kailangan pakinggan na o oh, ito peace offering ko, pati na tayo, isama loob ko sa iyo, galit ako sa iyo, at ikaw galit ka sa akin, pero wala ngayon ko, di ba? Hindi na tayo magkagalit. Kasi magkasama naman tayo sa isang compound, magkasama tayo sa isang bahay, magkasama tayo sa isang church. Pwede ba? Peace na tayo. Peace. Tawag nila dyan, truce. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so therefore, importante yung ginawa ni Jesus ng pag-alay sa sarili niya as the peace offering. Nagin mo ba yun, bro, Philip? Okay. Dito tayo, under that, kasi mabilis to na pag-aralan eh. Under that sa doctrinal language na yun, kailangan natin pag-aralan ang tinatawag natin sa Tagalog, Tayotay. What is Tayotay? Tagalog yan. Ang English niyan, figures of speech. Yan. Alright. Under figure of speech, meron tayong number one, allegory. Marami tayong allegory sa Bible. It is defined as a metaphor. For example, sabihin ng Ecclesiastes 12, Life is compared to things beginning from the fresh light to serve God and then someday the man will die. Alright. Ano ang allegory niya dito? Inialin tulad po niya ang buhay ng tao sa isang damo na, na ngayon sariwa, bukas, natuyuan. Inialin tulad niya rin doon sa kay James ng uh, uso. Nariyan ngayon, or mists. Nariyan ngayon, buka, umamaya niya disappear. Yeah. Importante ito. Sa allegory ni uh, between Sarah and Hagar, between Isaac and Ishmael, eh, it's, it's very important kung ano ang allegory. Kaya pag-aaralan mong mabuti, yung allegorical interpretation ni Pablo doon sa Galatians that si Hagar 
is representing the bondage and the law, and that Sarah is representing the freedom and the, the grace, and that Isaac is representing Jesus Christ, and Ishmael is representing the law of the Old Testament, and that Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ is the, the type of the Isaac who is going to be pointed towards the freedom and the grace and the New Testament covenant. So under allegorical personages, meron tayong parables na saan lagi ninyong paborito niya itong sa, sa Bible school. Nirequire ko sa kanila ang gumawa ng magkaroon ng pictures at ang pictures na ito ay tungkol sa pictures ng parable ni Jesus about the sower. In Matthew chapter 13, 1 to 23, the kinds of soil, number one, rocky, number two, thorny, number three, shallow, number four, sandy, number five, fertile soil. And that, ang kanilang harvest will be measured 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Yes. Apostrophe. Tayo, saan ginagamit ang apostrophe? Something if it is possessive. Okay. Alright. Apostrophe is an address to the absent person as though the present, as though the person is present. In Jeremiah 15 verse 10, ang sabi ni Jeremiah, My mother gave birth to me. I am in contempt to all. Everyone cursed me. So, ang mother niya, matagal nang namatay. Si Jeremiah ang pinag-usapan natin. Pero nang magsalita siya rito, as go, kasama niya ang mother niya, present at the time na nagsalita siya. Yaan ang apostrophe. Bakit natin inaalam ito? Sapagkat ginagamit natin ito sa uh, interpretation of the Bible, ginagamit natin ito sa komentaryo, ginagamit natin ito sa pagiging teacher, sa pagiging preacher, sa pagiging expositor, ginagamit natin ito sa pagiging commentator, ginagamit natin ito sa apologetics, at ginagamit natin ito sa church system. Yeah? Okay. Next, we have the fable. The fable, that the nature, and the other things, they are going to be talking to each other. Nakita niyo ba yung Judges chapter 9 verse 8? 15, ang mga punong kahoy nagsalita. Puso ngayon ang halaman. Kayo ba sa pag-aalaman nyo, nadama ninyo na ang halaman nagsalita sa iyo? O ikaw na gardener, nagsalita at kinausap mo mga halaman nyo? Alam nyo ba importante ng mga halaman kinakausap? Pag ikaw ay nag-garden at wala ka sa mood at galit ka, huwag kang mag-garden dahil kakalabanin ka ng mga halaman mo. Pag nag ka, kailangan masaya ka, kailangan kumanta ka, kailangan may music ka, at kailangan mo silang kausapin. Para sa ganoon, mag sila sa iyo at hindi silang mamatay. Sapagkat kahit gaano galing ng green tongue mo, kung nakasimangot ka at galit ka sa iba, huwag kang humawak ng halaman dahil mamamatay sila. Yeah? O kaya yung curse nila, ah, pupunta sa iyo. Sinasabi ko yan. See? <laughs> Maraming mga tao. Yung galit na galit, yung ano nga, nakasimagot, pero niya, itinapon ang kanyang sarili doon sa pagdagardin. Kasi wala siya ibang magawa eh. Kung wala kang magawa, huwag mong hawakan yung mga buhay. Dahil may buhay yun, mga halaman. Alam mo kung anong hawakan mo, walis. <laughs> Maglilis ka. Yun. Maghawa ka ng walis. Para sa ganyan, malilinisan ng lahat. Huwag yung alaman. Mamatay sila. Ikaw, masaya ka lang. Nagtaka ka, tay ka lang. Bag green thumb naman ako. Buhay naman yun. Buhay yung iba. Eh bakit ito? Namatay. Sabi mo, ah, nagtampo. Bakit nagtampo? Kasi galit na galit ka. Bakit, bakit ka naghawak ng alaman? Huwag kang maghawak ng alaman. Kita nyo, fable. The language. Tayo-tay. Okay? <laughs> Sila lahat ay nag, nangusap at nagsalita. Alam niyo ba, naghanap sila na magiging hari, magiging leader. Di ba, uso yan ngayon, bawat tao, bawat church, humiwalay doon kasi ayaw niya na yung leader, gagawa siya ng sarili niyang leader. 
O, sino ang gusto nila dito magiging leader? Itong isa, sabi nga, sinong gusto nating maghahari sa atin? Lati po siya doon sa olive tree. Pwede ba? Ikaw na ang hari namin. Gagawa kami ng eleksyon. Ibubuto ka namin. Sabi ng olive tree, ayoko nga. Ayoko kong iwanan yung aking oil. Sabi nga, napaka, napakahalaga yan. Punta siya sa fig tree. Sabi niya, pwede ba ikaw na leader namin? Mag-election tayo. Sabi ng fig tree, ayaw ko nga. Punta siya doon sa vine. Sa obas. Obasan. Pwede ba ikaw na ang aming kwan? Ang aming leader. Sabi ng obas, ayaw ko nga. Hindi ko iwanan yung, yung katas at tamis ko. Punta siya ngayon doon sa bramble. Pwede ba ikaw na leader namin? O, sabi ng bramble, kung ako ang leader niyo, sige. Sabi niya, susunugin ko kayo lahat. Kita niyo yan? Ah, kaya pag magpili ka ng leader mo, huwag kang magpili ng leader dahil may power siya kasi may tinik. Kung hindi, pagpili ka ng isang leader na ayon sa sinasabi sa iyo ng Panginoon. Kaya importante pa rin ang guidance ng Panginoon. Ito tayo sa hyperbole. Ang tawag ng iba, hyperbole. Inglés, hyperbole, nagtagalog ka na. Ang tawag natin dito, exaggeration. Na hindi naman kailangan, but it is in intended para mag-add ng pwersa sa statement. For example, alin ang lalagyan ng pwersa? At gawin natin exaggeration at hyperbole. Psalm chapter 6, verse 6. Ang sabi niya, I have made my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Pwede mo ba na ang dead mo mag-swim ng, ng luha? Ang tawag natin dyan, exaggeration. Pero, sa ang iba, importante sa kanila ang exaggeration because it has added force to their statements. They will do an exaggeration. Biro mo yan. Ang na-COVID isa, tapos ang sasabi mo, ay, ang barangay ganun, na-COVID sila? O, isa lang yon Tuloy, ni-lockdown lahat. Kawawa naman ako, hindi ako makalabas kasi na-lockdown na dahil sa isa. Diba? Nakaka, nakaka, nakaka sa tingin ninyo, kapag ipakinabang ang hyperbole na ito, exaggeration na ito, nag-report yung isa. Isa lang ang uh, COVID. Tapos ang sabi, buong barangay na COVID. Kaya pati kami nadamay. So hindi tuloy ako makalabas. Kita niya yan? Okay. Dahil sa lockdown, ito ako. Nagtuturo dito sa online na ito. Kung hindi lockdown, tihado ako lang tayo by the school online. <laughs> sa interrogation. What is interrogation? Usually, pinag-aralan niyo sa English. Ah, it's questioning. Si Job chapter 11 verse 7, ang question niya, Can you find God by searching? Natagpuan mo ba ang Diyos sa paghahanap mo? Oh, sabi nung isa, ay hinahanap ko yung araw. Sabi nung gabi, hindi ko matagpuan eh. Ah, ikaw, natagpuan mo ba ang ano ang araw? Sabi nung araw, ay ako nga hinahanap ko si gabi. Hindi ko rin matagpuan. Si pareho silang dalawa opposite. Kasi habang umiikot si araw, nawawala si dilim. Nawala si gabi. At nang dumating si gabi o dilim, ang araw ay wala na rin. Kaya nga, hindi nila matagpuan ang bawat isa. <laughs> so, pag hinahanap mo ang Diyos, matatagpuan mo ba siya? Yan ang tanong. In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, Is there anything too hard for God to do? May mahirap ba sa Diyos? Totoo yan. Walang mahirap sa Diyos. Lahat ng bagay, kaya niyang gawin. Maging sa pag-aaral mo, maging sa pag-asawa mo, maging sa trabaho mo, maging sa pamilya mo, maging sa future mo. Number seven tayo under tayotay. Irony. In Job chapter 12 verse 2, sinasabi rito niya, sabi niya, wisdom shall die with you. Tinawag irony sapagkat ang tinutukoy niya hindi actually wisdom, kung hindi ang foolishness mo ay mamamatay kasama mo. Which is, kaya tinawag yan irony dahil ang opposite na ibig niyang sabihin ang siyang sinasabi niya. 
So, sa alip na sabihin niya, Mang Mangka, sinasabi niya, you are wise. At imbis na sabi, sasabihin niya, it shall live with you. Sabihin niya, it shall die with you. So, that means to say, your wisdom shall uh, live with you. Your foolishness shall die with you. But because you are using irony, you are using the opposite side of the language. Number eight is the light thoughts. We call that lightotes. It's an intended idea by the negative opposite. Okay, Acts 21.39, ang sabi ron, Paul was from Tarsus. He was at a citizen of no mean city of Cilicia. Ang ibig sabihin noon, siya daw ay citizen mamamayan ng isang walang kakwentang-kwentang bayan ng Cilicia. That is light thoughts because that is the opposite of the negative side which is ang positive and the opposite side of that. Paul was from Tarsus, a citizen of a very important and a very flourishing city of Cilicia. Yeah? Okay. Then number nine, the metaphor. In Matthew 5.13, Jesus was using the salt. He said, if a lost salt sought its flavor or savor, wherewith it's going to be salted again, but to be casted out and to be trampled by the feet of men. Ano po ang ibig sabihin ng metaphor? Metaphor is an object, an activity, or idea, Used as symbolic of something else. Yeah, okay. The idea, the activity, the object, or the symbol of the salt or the savor. That means to say, ang idea rito, kung mawawalan ng lasa ang buhay ng isang patutuo na kristyano, saan niya kukunin muli ang kanyang lasa at tutuong buhay? na para kaibiganin siya ulit ng tao. By this way, kapag nawalan siya ng patutuo sa kanyang buhay, nawalan siya ng lasa sa kanyang pagiging mananampalataya, it is as good as well that it cast out siya. Ano yan? Yan ang sabi ni Jesus. Kapag ka ang iyong kapatid nagkasala laban sa iyo, puntahan mo siya. Ito nga ang sabi ni Jesus. Ang batas. Pagka ikaw mag-aalay ng handog at iyong pagsamba sa altar, naalaala mo na ikaw ay nagkasala laban sa kapwa mo, iwanan mo ang handog mo at iwanan mo ang pagsamba mo sa altar. Puntahan mo ang taong nagkasala ka sa kanya o alam mo siya nagkasala sa iyo. Puntahan at sabihin mo ang kanyang kasalanan. Magdala ka ng isang saksi. Kapag hindi niya aminin at hindi siya hihingi ng tawad o makiayos sa iyo, pumuntahan mo siya uli for the second time, magdala ka ng dalawang saksi. Kapag hindi niya pa rin aaminin, kumuha ka ng tatlong saksi. Kapag hindi niya pa rin aaminin sa gitna ng tatlong saksi at ng congregation, <clears throat> ituring mo na lang siya na infidel or outsider, or a publican. You see that? Yun po ang ibig natin sabihin. <coughs> na saan, yan ang uh, ibig sabihin ng nawalan, ka, na, nawalan siya ng lasa. So, kung ito naman inamin niya at nagkabati kayo, ang sabi ron, you have won your brother. So, balikan mo ang altar at ituloy mo ang pagsamba mo at ituloy mo ang ibibigay mo na giving sa Diyos or offering. Pero tayo, wala na tayong pakialam kung may galit tayo sa kapwa natin. Nasa church pa rin tayo. Nagkunwari pa rin tayo na walang nangyari. Pero nag-away kayo at meron kang kaaway, kaaway at di kabati. At may mga bagay sa counseling na hindi na ayos. Pero baliwala lang sa iyo. Why? Sapagkat hindi in-strike ng light mo ang tao ito. Ang Diyos mapagpasensya, pero huwag nating ubusin ang kanyang pasensya. 
ang sabag, sabi roon, my spirit will not always strive with man. Kaya, being a merciful God, there's always time for everything. Number 10, na language is metonymy. Sa, sa, ang ibig sabihin yan, one word is a substitute for another word. Dito, binasa ni Jesus Christ ang Luke chapter 24 verse 27. Ang sabi ni Jesus, beginning at Moses and all the prophets concerning himself. So all the prophets concerning himself. Hindi po niya sinabi concerning me. Kinuha niya ang one one word na himself in exchange for the one word na concerning me. Yan ang metonymy. A one word substitute for another word. Then onomo, onomatopia. Oh, gumagamit po tayo dito ng dektong sa Greek. Onoma. We are talking here of the names Topoia. The sound suggests the sense. Matthew 24 verse 5, ang sound dito sa Onoma Topia is important. Pakinggan ninyo. Ang sabi roon, ang sinner, he will be cut asunder. Ano ibig sabihin? May sound po na naglalagay. Sabi mo, totoo ba yan na nilalagari? Ay, basahin ninyo ang church history. Maraming mga saints na martyrs na nilagari in half. Totoo yan, nilalagari. So dito, ang sound ay importante. Cut asunder. Ibig sabihin, nilalagari. And half thrown into the place where there is grinding of teeth. So the Sound again is important. The grinding of teeth. Kayo ba nakarinig kayo ng grinding of teeth? Kailan kayo nakakarinig ng grinding of teeth? Yung mga taong natulog, anong tawag na? Ang tawag po namin yan sa Ilunggo, nagapago. Ano pong tawag niyo yan sa Bisaya? <clears throat> grinding of teeth. Pero ang tao na makasalanan, at hindi tumaga sa Panginoon, there will be a grinding of teeth. Okay? So, how much time do I have left? Five minutes? Okay. Now, babalik tayo doon sa ating elements. The number four elements is personal elements which is called subjective. Pag sinabi natin uli subjective, it is a personal experience, it is a personal testimony. Ano po ang subjectivity dito? Ang conviction na naranasan mo, ang prayer life na naranasan mo, ang spiritual decision na ginawa mo, ang karanasan mo sa pagsamba sa Panginoon, ang karanasan mo sa pakipisan sa kapwa mo na mananampalataya, ang karanasan mo sa nababasa mo sa banal na kasulatan at tungkol sa theological literature. Lahat na yan, we call that testimonies. They call that what? Subjective. It is a personal experience. So what is the one thing is another last question natin that Christians have in common even if there is no sub synoptic vision that differs. Ano ang commonality ng mga Kristiyano? Kahit magkakaiba ang pananaw nila sa synoptic vision. Ano yon? Ang kanilang commonality ay ang kanilang pananampalataya. It is is their faith that gives them the most satisfactory understanding of themselves, of God, of the relationship to God, of the human history, of the place of the whole world in the human experience. It is their faith that gives them the most satisfactory understanding of themselves, one, of God, two, of the relationship to God, three, of the human history, four, of the place of the whole world, five, 
in their human experience or subjective life. So, meron po tayong yan ang natalakay natin the four elements. Ang kasunod natin na tatalakayin dyan, ang coherence ng synoptic vision and the test of coherence. Ano po yung sinasabi natin coherence? Consistency. Magkas, magkatugma, magkasundo, hindi magkasalungat, hindi nagumpugan, hindi nag-away. Yes, parang sinabi mo kristyano ka, pero nangutang ka, ayaw mong magbayad. So yan, incoherent yan, inconsistent yan. Yes, kasi kung kristyano ka, ang sabi ng Biblia, oh no man initi. Ibig sabihin, wala kang i-stand out na utang na hindi mo bayaran. Wala kang ibayad ngayon, kausapin mo yung tao na napagkautangan mo. At sasabihin mo, magbabayad naman ako, pwede ba maghulog-hulog ako. Yan. Pangalawa, uh, pwede ba yung bayaran ng ilik <laughs> o bigas? Uh, o pwede din ba bayaran yung utang ko ng ganito? Ah, sige. Paglingkuran ko na lang kaya sa'yo. Hmm, sige. Sa halip na kumuha ka ng katulong dahil lockdown ngayon, ako na lang magkatulong para sa ganyan makabayad ako ng utang sa'yo. Di ba? O. Oh. Ganun yun eh. Tawag natin dyan coherence. Sinasabi mo, spirit-filled ka, born again ka. Pero kung may spirit-filled ka na tao, naintindihan mo ang mga bagay na ito. Kaya, napaka-importante na alalahan ninyo ang ating uh, elements. I mean, ang ating, yeah, that's right. Elements natin. There are three elements, the factual, interpretative, and the personal elements. And then, pag-aralan pag ninyo ang circle. We have circle 3, circle 2, circle 1. That's three also. Then, pag-aaralan ninyo ang ating uh, uh, apologists, we have that, ano na nga uli, evidentialist, we have negativist, and then uh, number two, sa ating the probabilist. Yeah, importante po yung ating mga apologists at ang ating defenders ng faith natin because the apolog apologetics is the one who is defending our faith from the outside attack. And so, God bless you until we are going to see again and we will close this in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the study. We thank you indeed, Holy Spirit, na sa aming pag-aaral na ito, importante pa rin na naipakita mo sa amin ang kahalagahan ng pag-aaral namin sa Biblia and uh, is the Bible the Word of God. And uh, also, is the Christian defender, is the Christian apologist necessary in our time in this millennia? Yes. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you that we can depend on you as our defender and our apologist. Yes. And indeed, we thank you for the victory for today. And all those that have linked with us, that have studied together with us, may you bless them. May you prosper their lives. May you prosper their thoughts. And may you bless them. To give them more desire. And, O oh Lord God, to uh, enhance, O oh Lord, what they have learned. And whatever they have learned and pick up from here, I pray that they will be able to share it with everybody. And especially those that needed, O oh Lord God, these lectures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Po, Mamioli. Thank you, Thank you po. Po. Thank po. You po. Thank you, Po. God bless. God bless you, Po. Ay, nakita ko po si Lia. Ang sabi niya. Kita ko si Brother Kit. Kita ko si Eliza. Kita ko si Marjorie. Yes. At masaya ako na nandyan kayo. <laughs> Ang hindi nyo nakita. Hindi nyo nakita si Pastor Edwin Bellantri. <laughs> Pastor Edwin ang sabi niya nalalaman niya yung tungkol sa ating school sa online okay uh, alright anything Pastor Pastor Arnold and anything oh.
Pastor. Meron anything? Meron pa ba ikaw idagdag? Nag-end na ako ng prayer? Sa akin, okay na po. Okay na yun. Kasi ang tanong natin sa susunod na lang, kanya dito. Opo. Sige po. So, magandang, magandang tanghali sa inyo lahat. At salamat sa iyo, Pastora, for your time. Thank for you po. For sharing the word of God. For sharing this kind of life. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. 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 Thank you po, Pastora. Thank you po. Thank you po. Tayo-tayo lang ang nag-aaral. Wala na iba. Ah, live po. May na. Live po ito. Nakalive sa Facebook. Ah, okay. Ang live okay. sa May mga taga-US na nood din, mga kaibigan ko na mga missionary. Okay. Uh, naka- ah, so, kailangan pala talaga yung English na lecture natin. Yeah. Dahil <laughs> mga Filipino rin naman sila. Ha? Huh? Yeah, all Filipino missionary. So, ah, okay. English it's okay. Hindi kasi nga ba, alam mo one time, the Lord reminded me. Nung kaka-Englishize ko, nang kaka-Englishize. Is it okay? Englishize and Tagalizing is okay? Parang kawerdo ka ako. Kasi, nawagan ko si Pastor Edwin. Sabi niya, ma'am, pinapanood ko yun. Alam ko yun yung nangyayari. So, alam ko yun yung lecture. Good set up God, ha? Pastor Ed, nasusunod, magtuturo ka na after ng subject sa ito. Okay. Eh, totoo lang daw niya. Yung ano yan, uh, management of ministry. That's so, alam niyo yung authority like that? Management of ministry. ministry. Hindi po namin napag-aralan oh, dito sa Vietnam yan. Yung mga bats ng Vietnam, hindi napag-aralan. Ay, kasi nga, yan nga daw ang susunod na ituturo niya. Dahil tinatanong niya, ano ma'am gusto mo ituro ko? Sabi ko, ituro mo yung management of ministry. Amen. Yeah. At kung meron din katuro- okay. 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 katuroan ko na patungkol sa money. Ha? Hindi lang management, kundi sa money. <laughs> I need to use for our ministry. Kasi importante po kasi sa money na yan. Na hindi nakadikit ang money sa puso natin. Opo. Dapat hindi rin nakadikit sa palad natin. Hindi, sa dati sa palad po natin. Ang message ko kanina, binigay sa atin ng Diyos para ibigay natin sa iba. At may money. Abrahamic covenant pa yan, ma'am. Abraham, Ay, yeah. okay, okay. Kaya, yun ang reason na kapag ka hindi na lockdown at may biyahe na kapuntang Vietnam, may libre na ako na pabasa. <laughs> yes po, yes po. Next year, pag God will... Oh, God ano, willing. God willing po. Magkakaroon po tayo ng, uh, sabi ko nga rito, ng mission exposure po for all the ministry, ministers or the pastors at mga leaders. Yung mga gusto. KKB and KK. Oh, KKB and KK. KKK. Naalala ko po, sabi ko na sa Wise to Judge, kasi hindi sila maniwala. Sabi ko, alam niyo sa Pilipinas, ang hirap magiging milyonaryo at milyonarya. Punta kayo ng Vietnam. Ang momento, nalalapag ang aeroplano bago kayo nababa sa airport. Mga milyonaryo. Milyonaryo. Kasi, yung dollar o pesos mo, ipagpapalit mo, katakot-takot na million siya. <laughs> so, hindi sila maniwala. Sabi ko, ay, oo, oh, oh, subukan nyo kung tayo biyat na. Okay. Experience. Try to experience the, uh, the miracles ka mo of millions. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes? Okay. Maganda yung shelter ni Philip, ha? Ano ang ginawa yan? Parang ilalim niya ng kama, ah, Brad. Opo, ilalim ng kama. <laughs> Man cave. Man cave. Parang may, ano, may privacy. Okay.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.